Welcome back to Marching to Madness, where it is my pleasure this afternoon to have a very special guest in the new basketball coach at Hofstra University, Coach Speedy Claxton. You know the name. He was a star there from 1996 to 2000, and he's been the head coach, or the assistant coach, pardon me, to Coach Joe Mihalik, uh, who retired and then moved into administration. So first thing is, congratulations, Coach. Thank you. I appreciate that, Ken. Yeah. All right. I, you know, as you go into uh, this uh, job as the head coach there at Hofstra, it's a storied program, lots of great tradition. Talk about taking over the program and the goals you're going to have in place now for the uh, squad. Well, the goals will remain the same. This has been a championship level program uh, since I've been here, and we will continue to be that way. Um, you know, it's it was it, it was cool taking over a program that I, I feel like I helped jumpstart. Yeah. It's it's like a it's a surreal moment just to I was just actually saying that five minutes ago while I was sitting here at my desk looking around like wow this is crazy. I can't believe this is actually my office. <laughs> yeah. The the kind of the new kid on the block as a head coach, but a member of the old guard, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, you now let's talk about your NBA career. You were drafted uh, by Larry Brown, a Hall of Famer, Philadelphia 76ers, 2000. You were traded to San Antonio, and you won that chip in 2003 with Coach Popovich. How have those two coaches affected maybe your philosophy and then just how you played and how, maybe how you will coach? Well, like, they were, they were all great coaches. Um, mm -hmm. LB was a was big on practice. Um, practice is where you where you get better um, collectively, and I, I feel those same thoughts. Um, I'm big on practice, mm -hmm. and I'm going to want my guys to practice at game speed, so they're they're comfortable shooting the shots um, when they do get those same shots during the game. Mm -hmm. And then from Coach Pop, you know, Coach Pop really treated every man on the team the same, whether you was the, his best player or you was the last man on the roster. And I think um, guys on the team respected that and it made them give their full, full their full out effort. And hopefully I get to do that same thing here. Yeah, and of course, leadership and mentoring is a big key. As we've gone through the pandemic and it's still out there, although we think it's raised some, how have you been a mentor to these players on and off the court? I mean, well, I've been a mentor from them since I was an assistant coach. Um, yeah, seven you know, years. I, I pretty much have the same background as most of them, so I can relate to them. Mm -hmm. um, and they know that. So they know that they can come talk to me about anything, whether it's basketball, uh, well, there's real life situations that's going on. They know that um, I'm kind of just like them. So mm -hmm. they, I can relate to them. So they're, they're, they're open to come and talk to me about anything. One of the kids there on your team uh, is a Dickie Vitale, I would say a PT peer and Jalen Ray. He's the second leading returning scorer. Uh, or he's the second leading scorer last year and the leading returning scorer in the conference. Talk a little bit about his game and how you can see him, you know, take it to another level. Yeah, Jay Ray's been great. He actually just finished working out here. Um, and he, he's been in the gym ever since the season has ended. He, he's looking to take that next step in the progression here and become a dynamic player. And hopefully he's preseason player of the year here. But he's been working hard. Um, like you said, he, he's the top return scorer. And I don't see that changing. If he doesn't lead this league in scoring, then I would think that I would think that he didn't have a, a good season here. But I don't see that happening. He's 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 been working hard, and he has a goal that he's focused on, and I'm going to help him reach it. You've also got a really good point guard here in Caleb Burgess. He led the CAA with 5.6 assists per game. Yeah, Caleb was tough. Um, he he he's a young up and coming. Point guard, like you said, he led the league and assists last year, and I only see him getting better. Um, he's working on his outside shot and his decision making, so I can definitely see him as as being one of the top point guards in the league. What do you think's his best attribute? 
I would say his best attribute, honestly, would be his leadership. Guys gravitate towards him and they listen to him. Um, he's the ultimate competitor and he he really get guys to, to play hard. Coach, you, you've always uh, been able to develop point guards there with Coach uh, Mahalik, I think seven years right beside of him. Uh, yep. Ju Justin Wright Foreman was one of my favorite players to watch. Uh, talk a little bit about how you impact point guards and how you develop them maybe differently from anybody else. Well, you know, I was a point guard myself. So yeah. I'm, I'm, very, I'm very experienced yeah. in, that, in that field. So as long as these guys listen to learn and um, take, what I, will take what I say and translate it onto the court, they're going to be fine. And they know that they can trust me because they know I've been to the highest of levels and I know what I'm talking about because I played the position myself. So I, I, I've done it. Mm -hmm. So they, they have no choice but to listen to me. Yeah, and as and as they listen, how do you work on the mental part, the leadership part, the component that makes them a quarterback? Uh, well, I just tell them that they have to be the coach on the floor. Um, our best leader that we 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 had here, we was just talking about it earlier today, was Dejoe Bowie. Mm -hmm. like he 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 was point guard for us. He was the starting point guard for us for three years, and I mean he was the ultimate 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 leader um guys really looked up to him and you could just tell like when he when he spoke like all eyes were on him mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. his, his he has some great leadership um abilities and that's why we won what part of leadership do you really stress from i guess your upperclassmen and your maybe your point guard off the court you know do the right things mm -hmm. um you gotta show these. You, you gotta show the young kids uh, what's what's right from wrong. Um, you know, here we have to do the right things on and off the court. And I look for my upperclassmen, who who most most of the time are your leaders, to do the right things and show the underclassmen what it's all about and what this program is about. Coach, I tell you, the transfer portal is uh, the flavor of the moment. I think in college <laughs> basketball. I mean, it's crazy. We got seventeen. Nuts right around 1,700 kids. Uh, now, I know you've got eight new faces. I think five of them are transfers. Yeah. Talk a little bit about how this is going to change the game, maybe. Yeah, it's real, it, it really is going to change the landscape of college basketball, especially with them implementing that new uh, that transfer rule where you could play right away. Like, this generation, it, they already – will up and leave you um, yeah. they don't like something that's going on. And now that they, they know that they get to play right away, I think the transfer portal is going to just get even, it's going to get crazier um, over the years. Like mm -hmm. kids are just going to be jumping in the portal um, whenever, they, whenever they don't agree with you. And it's going to be tough. I mean, the, these kids kind of got the upper hand on you. because So it's, it's, it's tough to coach them at hard, as hard as you want to coach them. Because you you almost gotta play nice so that they don't leave you. You yeah. almost you almost gotta do double recruiting. You gotta recruit kids to come in, but then you also gotta keep recruiting the kids to sign your roster today. Mm -hmm. Lots of challenges. What's the biggest challenge with it though? I was I'm, I would say to keep all the kids happy. Like mm -hmm. all these kids want to come in and play major minutes, and they don't realize that you have to play a role in order for a team to be successful. And all these kids want instant gratification. So they want to come in their freshman year and play right away rather than waiting a year or two until the, until the upperclassmen graduates and they kind of slide into that spot. Nah, they want to play from day one. Darlin' Stone Dunbar comes in to you from Iowa State and then Aaron Estrada from Oregon. Talk a little bit about being able to get like – the quote unquote power five. I don't like labeling anybody, but for what we're talking about right now, power five players to be interested in Hofstra up on the transfer. I mean, that was big for us to get those those two kids from a power five from power five schools. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that says a lot about myself and my staff. Like we really went out there and 
we we worked for that. Um, they didn't just fall in our laps. Like we we recruited them hard, and they believed in what we were, were preaching. Um, we we told both of them they could come in and be great players here, and we we gave them a, a plan of developing them, and they they loved what we showed them. Even so credit, even, to, my, credit to my staff. Sure, sure. E- even with losing though, Tariq. Coburn and Isaac Kanate, you it looks like as I was studying your team, you may have more depth now. Yeah, I have, it's funny because I was just talking to one of my assistant coaches and Serge Clement today about that. He said, Yo, we, we, we have a deep team. I'm like, Yeah, we probably have a too, too deep of a team. And all <laughs> these kids don't want to, all these kids don't want to play major men's. Like I said, it's gonna be, it's gonna be tough for me to keep everybody happy. I wouldn't be surprised. If a couple of kids transfer after at the end of the year, it's just it is what it is at this point. Yeah, and, and let me ask you this: uh, philosophy wise, offense and defense, uh, will there be much difference? Um, I think the biggest difference uh, that we you would see with our team would be on the defensive end. Um, mm-hmm. We're predominantly a zone team in years past, and I think I'm gonna play a little bit more man to man. I want, I want you to, I want you to feel us a little bit here. Yeah. yeah, you get up in the guys and and try to make them turn the ball over the back court, you get points yeah. off turnovers, that type thing. That that's a style of ball these kids like. Do, do you do you pressure all over the court at all? We won't over pressure. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you have the ball, you we will we will press you, mm-hmm. and then the other four guys will will be in a good defensive help position. Mm-hmm. Um, so we won't go crazy with it, like overall out, all out denials. And because I think when you do that, it opens up some driving lanes and some gaps. And if you have a pretty good ball handler, um, it can kind of hurt your defense. So once you have the ball, we're, we're definitely going to pressure you. And the other four guys will be in help. Last thing is when kids come in uh, and, you know, their name, image, and likeness uh, issue, is that going to be – just a big thing at maybe the power conferences, or do you see the CAA going through the same thing? You no, know, I think I think that's gonna that rule will benefit the power fives more than mm-hmm. it will at this level. Mm-hmm. Um, they're the ones who have the big boosters who, who could donate or uh, not donate, but who could pay these kids for the name, image, likeness, and they they'll be fine with losing a little bit of dollars because it might not translate. And to, to dollars for them on the back end, but um, you know the alumni here or the, the the sponsors around town, they might not be willing to put out as much money if there's if there's not money coming back from mm-hmm. that. So it's gonna be hard at the mid major level. I think that's more of a a, a high major rule mm-hmm. or thing, whatever. Mm-hmm. Coach Speedy Claxton. Uh, Hofstra Pride. Coach, it's really great to connect with you. We hope we can get you back on here before the season starts, whatever you know what's actually on that grease board, and it's kind of locked in. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. It's been fun, Ken. Thanks for having me.